Oftentimes, artistic inspiration is not far at all, and in fact, sometimes it can be right outside our doorstep. In many ways, looking outside our windows and into our gardens can serve as a very beautiful subject matter for a drawing exercise. And in today's video, we can explore a way in which we can approach a garden drawing. So with that being said, hey guys, my name is Matt, and welcome to another video by artincontext.org, where we explore various art-related topics. And in today's video, we will be looking at how we approach a garden drawing. Now, naturally, there are many ways to approach a garden drawing. In one sense, we can look on the internet for reference images where we start to think about how we curate different elements together. But then there's another way to approach a garden drawing where we are really just trying to represent the colors and shapes and the composition in a more playful and loose way. And that's what we're going to break down today. Now, there are many ways to pursue an artwork of a garden. Again, this can be done with painting. This can be done through a drawing. This could also be done in a more realistic or abstract fashion. However, in this tutorial on drawing, gardens we will explore how to create a beautiful garden drawing made up of various elements working together and in doing so we will also be learning how to create a sense of depth and perspective to establish a little bit more of a realistic composition but it is quite playful it is quite loose and we are looking at how to pair colors how to kind of seek out elements that kind of work together to represent a garden now you can obviously look at your garden outside if you feel like it is um, a good source of visual inspiration if not you can obviously seek out various images online <clears throat> but the intention is to start by shaping the scene so the first thing we want to do is we want to start with a light sketch of a scene providing that we have found a space that is interesting and worth drawing um, always try to look for a space with a variety of different elements and colors um, and this is just basically providing ourselves with a little bit more of an enriched scene and a little bit more of a challenge now diversity within a garden is always going to make it slightly more interesting interesting but again the way in which we start this um, garden drawing process is the first thing we want to do is start with a light sketch of the scene now we can then start to lightly sketch in the horizon line which will start to define how large or how far elements should be drawn again that's depending on how close or how far you are the idea is to take notes of how elements sit in the foreground midground and background and slowly start to shape them into a composition from there we can start to work in a light sketch of the various features, concentrating more on their size as they shift from the foreground into the background. Now as we continue we are basically establishing the difference in scale of these various features by doing this with a very light kind of sketching process we are setting up the quality of depth within our garden drawing and slowly establishing the difference between the background, the foreground and the midground. In doing so, we are basically creating a mini landscape and that is exactly what a drawing of a garden is or an artwork of a garden. And this is why we want to seek out a space that is inspiring with a diverse range of elements to kind of um, create something a little bit more unique. So we also want to start thinking about tonal values at this point and which areas are more illuminated than others. However, the intention is to keep your scene quite lightly sketched at this early stage. Now from there, we're going to lightly erase the scene. So once we have worked out the basic structure of the main elements, within the composition we can then proceed to lightly erase our drawing by doing this we allow the remaining ghost lines to assist us as we proceed to add color on top of them and slowly refine the various elements now we're going to start by adding the first layers of color and in doing so we are kind of defining and sketching out the actual elements that the garden is made up of so with the garden sketch in this case we can be quite playful with our mark making and this is where the fun part of how to loosely represent these various features becomes a little bit more of a playful process, not necessarily worrying too much about detail, but more trying to capture general form um, of these various elements, whether it's flowers, maybe a shed in the background, trees, and so on. So with a garden sketch, we can be really playful. We don't need to worry too much about perfectly replicating features, but working more with suggestive marks and general shapes. With color, we also wanna have a more general observation of how the environment represents them. So this is where we kind of think about the main shadows and the main highlights and kind of the main color values that are present and scattered throughout the garden drawing. Now, depending on the scene that you are drawing, you can also consider the main ways in which shadows and highlights appear and how they kind of uh, compartmentalize the garden into various areas. So you want to consider the space you are drawing and consider which spaces are darker and lighter. By doing this, you are able to basically just be a little bit more strategic with the actual 
features or which features should remain lighter and which features should be darker in their tonal value. Now we're gonna proceed by working with shadow and light. So the reason we start with lighter tonal values in our drawing is to then use them to guide how darker the other features should be in the surrounding environment. A good example would be if you were to draw a shed and one side is more exposed to the light source than the other. So this is where we would change the color values in the different sides of the shed depending on which side is facing the light source. To further emphasize this detail, you can also see how dark or light the entire shed is compared to the surrounding features. And once we start to understand that tonal variation and difference, we can then start to navigate which uh, elements within our garden should be darker or lighter, depending on which one we have previously um, kind of shaded or drawn. Um, and we kind of continue this process throughout the entire landscape. So we're always using other elements to determine how light or dark each of them should be in comparison to one another. Now, another way we could understand this is that the details in the background start to become less distinct as well. So if there were trees in the background, for instance, we could darken them with vague vertical marks to represent the quality of tree trunks. And again, this is a more abstract representation, but how it is contextualized with all the elements working together, it makes sense and therefore has a more realistic quality. The opposite is true for details that shift from the midground into the foreground. They become much more clear and distinct in their form and structure. As features start to shift into the foreground, we can make them more defined in their details. We can also start to integrate darker marks on the top of our lighter marks. And by doing so, we are emphasizing shadows and highlights and creating that juxtaposition within the various elements. However, it is important to consider the form of various features and how darker marks can be used to define the form of these various features. So we can proceed by playing with these details and integrating this um, and thinking about that conceptually as we kind of integrate details into the various elements. And a good example of this is if you consider flowers, you can play around with how you outline your flowers, keeping your lines quite loose. Um, but you then can maybe represent features like disc florets with spots. So we are maintaining detail, but we're not representing a complete likeness of the actual elements. And this concept we can kind of keep uh, within the back of our mind as we slowly construct a garden drawing. So once again, there are no rules and being playful is a really good approach in terms of representing these various features. You can look at their basic shape, try to emulate the shape, try to kind of integrate colors, play around with the layering of colors and slowly kind of uh, put all these elements together in terms of shape and how they compositionally kind of work together So there's a lot of room for play. Remember it is always important However to consider the form of various elements within grass for instance We really want to keep those elongated strokes to represent the blades or those um, Kind of rounded qualities within the petals of the flowers and so on with flowers. It's a little bit different We can play around with adding line work over maybe an established mark of color and this also creates this layering effect which which is very beautiful and very playful within a garden drawing. However, with flowers, for instance, we can maybe play around with how we add in line work over an established mark of color. Um, and this is just a great way to kind of create a variety, especially when you're drawing a lot of flowers in the same space, to represent them in their form with these very simple kind of marks and they still maintain this idea of detail as they kind of collectively represent a bed of flowers, for instance. So remember that scale is another way we define depth within our land landscape drawing as well. The idea is that we always want to make details less distinct and perhaps smaller in size as they move into the distance. This is particularly true for flowers as they can be a great and clear feature that determines a sense of scale. Uh, by strategically drawing flowers large and making them smaller in the distance, we emphasize the quality of depth within our garden drawing. And lastly, always consider light and shadow in all the elements from the background to the foreground. Now remember as we continue, we really just want to think about how the details into the foreground become much more distinct in terms of how they are seen. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean we have to represent them in their complete likeness. We can play around with line work and how we build up those details to kind of suggest the structure and shape. But otherwise, as we continue, it's really up to you from this point onwards in terms of what kind of elements you'd like to represent. But there are some key things we want to remember. We do want to remember that details moving into the distance can become less distinct and a little bit more vague in terms of shape and detail. We also want to build up our garden drawing from lighter to darker tonal values. This way we have more control over the coloring process. We also want to think about how things become larger as they move into the foreground and more distinct in terms of detail. However, that doesn't necessarily mean we have to represent things in their complete likeness, but there is room to play around with how we kind of maintain the quality of form and structure, let's say of flowers or grass um, or other elements that kind of sit in the foreground. 
um, but don't necessarily represent all the details in a very realistic likeness. But otherwise, guys, that is it on how to approach a garden drawing. Again, there are many ways to approach a garden drawing. This one is a little bit more playful. It's kind of giving you an idea of how to utilize color to just maintain structure and form. And in doing so, we are representing a garden, but in a much more loose and playful way. If you did like this video and are interested in similar or related topics, please do let us know in the comment section below. And if you would like to support us, you can do so by liking the video and subscribing that helps us to just grow the channel your support means a lot and in doing so we get to make more art videos for you guys which we love to do but thanks again for tuning in that is it from me today until next time cheers